Hello and welcome to Inside Line. This week we look at the latest twist in the Stig Top Gear saga, Subaru's new sports car and how Mark Webber regained the lead in the Formula 1 World Championship. But first, news of a special option package for the Holden Commodore. Richard, tell us more. Well, it's called the Red Line and I, if you ask me, I think it's going to have uh, the HSV bosses seeing, uh, seeing red themselves because it's very close to the GXP pack which came out on the HSVs last year. It's, it's $2,500 mm -hmm. over the price of an SSV Commodore or SSV Calais and it brings them into that ballpark where they're actually snapping at the heels of HSV for price and also performance. Yeah, okay, so, so what, what do we get with this, this package? Well, you ba basically get better brakes, um, sports suspension and a couple of other goodies. But I mean, it, it really does, not only does it move the needle on price, but it also moves the needle on, on going that hardcore element, which has always been HSV's domain. That's right. And uh, in terms of the, the pricing, I mean, with the GXP, it was only like a, a couple of grand or something like that. But I mean, are they going to have another GXP? Well, um, Holden's le uh, HSV's left that up in the air this week because they've said that they, you know, it was always a limited edition model. But you'd you'd like to think that they would because they've moved the club sport up a notch, and you really have to come in with something below that to keep the the link between mm. the H a Holden product down here mm. and the HSV product. I think you, I mean you're certainly not going to confuse the two cars in terms of the the styling still. I mean, no, the no. new E3 come out, you still got that very aggressive looking front end. No, HSV does out there like no one else really. <laughs> That's right. Well, Subaru is also aiming to appeal to driving enthusiasts beyond its WRX and SCI hot hatches with a new rear-wheel drive coupe. The sports car is being co-developed with Toyota, and Richard, we've seen our first pictures of Subaru's half of the project. Well, I hope they're not the final pictures because it's one ugly-looking beast. There's loads of camouflage mm. on it, obviously, but mm. you can you can see the basic di dimensions of the car. The question remains: Will Subaru bring in a car that isn't all-wheel drive? Well, that's right. Well, they have hesitated over whether they would uh, bring this model, but enthusiasts locally, I think, would like to see it, that's for sure. Yeah, uh, but you've got to ask yourself the question as well. I mean, we've had these types of cars before. We've had the, you know, we've had the Celica, we've had the Honda Integra, right, yeah. and where are they now? If there was such a big success, wouldn't they still be around? And I think that's the, the questions that Subaru is mulling over at the moment before oh. it makes a final decision. No, I think we might know something by the end of the year. Yeah, um, I talked to Nick Senior last week, and, he, oh. and he's the, the boss of Subaru oh. in Australia, and he says he's going to wait until he sees what the specs are, what the price is likely to be before he makes a decision. Okay. Which well, sounds like good if sense. If you're an enthusiast, fingers crossed. Well, we may not know the true identity yet of Subaru's new coupe, but we do now know that Top Gear Stig is no longer the world's most famous anonymous racing driver. The man behind the white helmet, Ben Collins, has released extracts from his tell-all book to a British newspaper. And what are the latest revelations, Richard? Well, it's, it's, a, it's a cracking read, really. I mean, he's talking about how the lengths that he went to to keep his identity mm. a secret. Things like he, he went eight miles before he'd take his balaclava off. He never parked in the same spot um, twice and he also kept the identity from his family and friends. You may remember a film called Wall Street in which um, Gordon Gecko said that greed was good and greed works. It doesn't. You're watching this children, greed is bad. Greed, uh, yeah, he's just decided he'd rather be but put it this way, he's history. Will there be a new stick? That's the other big question. Well, I think there is. And, and I mean, there is, there is a bit of talk out there that this could be one massive publicity stunt. It's being portrayed as, as a big blow up between the two. Clarkson's had a go at Stig. Stig's had a go at Clarkson. But, you know, the question has to, has to be asked, you know, is this, is this part of a, a, you know, the latest Top Gear, um, you know, putting one over on the public? Mm. Oh well, I'm sure we'll find out more. But from a tame racing driver to some that are not so controlled, Lewis Hamilton damaged his chances of winning the F1 World Championship this year after crashing out of the Italian GP. There is Lewis Hamilton, he's out of the race! And good news for Mark Webber, I'd say, Richard. Excellent news for Mark Webber, he's, he's back in the lead. Whether he can stay there or not, uh, a big question. There's still five drivers in contention for the championship, mm. so it really is a cracking end to the season. Um, I think Webber's a big chance. I think he's got the maturity that perhaps some of the guys around him, like Vettel and like um, Hamilton, don't have. Yeah, and Alonso's obviously put himself in contention by winning the Italian GP, but still a bit of a concern about whether, you know, Webber's got that consistency. I mean, it was a bit of a suspect yeah. race for him. Yeah, it was, it was, but at least he hung in there. You know, mm. he didn't, he didn't put himself out. And I think, you know, since since Melbourne, he hasn't really put it, put much of a foot wrong. Mm. Oh, well, fingers crossed. Yep. Inside Line will be back next week, but in the meantime, for all your motoring news and reviews, log on to drive.com.au.